damn it, science people, why are you always firing probes outwards? And then they have to go past all this stuff, like planets and asteroids and crap, to escape the solar system. Don't you realize that if we want to see what's outside the solar system, we just need to shoot them up, straight up? And then we don't have to go past all that junk, and we can finally see what's between us and the next star system over. Is it thick goo? Is it thin goo? Is it the ether? What the heck is wrong with you? It's just so easy. Just, just go up. Why are we always going out? Whenever we talk about the solar system, we're always using flat objects for reference. Plates, flying disks, pancakes, and pizzas, as it's arranged in a flat disk known as the plane of the ecliptic. Formed from a blob of hydrogen gas and dust in the solar nebula, gravity pulled everything together, and then the conservation of angular momentum set the whole thing spinning faster and faster. The spinning pulled the whole solar system into the disk we see today, with a star at the center and the planets embedded in the surrounding disk. So as a result, the sun, moon, planets, and their moons all move through a relatively small region in the sky. And this definitely makes things easier to send spacecraft from world to world. NASA's Voyager 2 was able to visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune because they were all lined up like dominoes. When Willie Sutton was asked why he robbed banks, he answered, that's where the money is. So when we explore along the plane of the ecliptic, that's where the science is. Everything in our solar system is arranged along this flat area. So it makes sense to look along this region. But wait, as you know, the solar system isn't actually flat. Some objects rise a little above or below the plane of the ecliptic. This is known as a planet's orbital inclination. Of all the planets, Mercury has the greatest with 7%. It's even crazier for the dwarf planets. Pluto is 17% off the plane of the ecliptic, and Eris is 44%. In fact, one of the reasons Eris went undiscovered for so long is because it orbits so far outside the plane of the ecliptic. It wasn't until Mike Brown and his team from Caltech looked far enough outside the usual hiding spaces that they found these additional dwarf planets. There really isn't much outside the flat plane of the ecliptic. It's also much more difficult to get spacecraft to travel above or below. When spacecraft launch, they already have tremendous velocity just from the rotation of the Earth and the speed of the Earth orbiting the Sun. Now, I realize this is more outwardist propaganda for you, so why no up? If you did want to go that way, you need a powerful rocket capable of creating velocity in this direction or that direction. If you wanted to escape the Earth's gravity and explore the solar system in the regular old way, you need to add about 10 kilometers per second in velocity to your spacecraft. But for straight up, you need about 30 kilometers per second, meaning more fuel and compromises to your payload. So it still sounds like I'm making excuses. So here's the deal. You might be amazed to learn that spacecraft have actually been sent up. The European Space Agency's Ulysses spacecraft, launched in 1990, had the goal of looking down on the sun from above. It wasn't possible to do this with just a rocket, but engineers were able to use a gravitational assist from Jupiter to kick Ulysses into an orbital inclination of 80 degrees, and for the first time, we were able to see the sun from above and below. And a new European mission is in the works called the Solar Orbiter, and it'll get into an orbital inclination of 90 degrees to be able to see the sun's poles directly for the first time. So if all goes well, it'll launch in 2018. So why don't we go up? Actually, we do. We're going up again very soon. It's good to go up. It's always good to get outside of our regular stomping grounds and see our solar system from new angles and perspectives. So if you could send a spacecraft anywhere in the solar system, where would you choose? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank John Chumack, Eric Scratch, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Wanna get in the action? Click here. Some objects rise a little beloved a little beloved. Beloved and a bow. And a little beloved. A bow.
A bow. A bow, beloved, and a bow. A beloved, and a bow.